Hi everyone, welcome back to Tears of the Kingdom with me, Austin John Plays, to what people are assuming is a walkthrough and being part 5, despite the fact that I've made over 90 videos on this video game so far. And we've now finally completed all four parts of Regional Phenomena, so now it's time to go turn in this quest and see what lies ahead. So for this, let's make our way to Lookout Landing, head up to the very top where the telescope is, and talk to Pearl over here. Yeah. Linky, I heard what happened. Hmm. The major cold front that descended upon the Rito and the marbled rock roast that the Gorons couldn't get enough of, then there was the sludge contaminating Zora's water, and finally the Gerudo menaced by Gibdos and a sand shroud. You faced some serious challenges and overcame all of them. Well done, Link. So, the person resembling Princess Zelda was behind the scenes of all the phenomena as you discovered. This has to be related to the upheaval somehow, and I have something important to share as well. Huh? This is probably one of, like, the coolest cutscenes in the game. Ah, isn't that? Link, look at this! Quickly! Yeah, I'm looking. Oh, it looks like right at the top of Hyrule Castle, Zelda's here. Who, so we've deduced that she's an imposter Zelda. Your Highness. Who's gone around and, and done a whole bunch of evil stuff. And now she's gone. Linky, did you see that? That was the princess, wasn't it? From here, that's going to finally complete regional phenomena. And this is going to be the new quest, Crisis at Hyrule Castle. So now we are tasked with making our way up to the top of Hyrule Castle in the throne room. Now for this next area, there's going to be a series of battles that you can take breaks in between. So if at any point you feel like you're not prepared for the battle that you're about to partake in, you could feel free to just like drop down a travel medallion and return back here. Link. Yeah. Link. Uh-huh. Come to me. Doing that. I am waiting. Waiting for you. The way that they changed her voice, it's so creepy. It's so creepy, but I love it. All right, so from here, our very first step is making our way into the gatehouse. The second gatehouse this is part of the floating part of Hyrule Castle. And if we come over here and we look down, it's, it's just Zelda. She's just chilling there waiting. Can I take a picture of Zelda? No, okay. Oh. She vanish. Oh, and then a whole bunch of monsters are gonna spawn in. <laughs> I forgot how quickly that happens. One of my new favorite tactics whenever I'm being ambushed is to drop down a Dazzle Fruit, which is gonna stun a whole bunch of enemies. I also decided to take my boomerang, attach a Frost Cleoc Horn to it. That way I could actually freeze a whole bunch of enemies at once. And also, all my uh, sages are out here to help me. So that's nice of them. Doing this, we could just freeze everyone nice and easy. That way I don't have to deal with their elemental damage or anything. And also that first attack when an enemy is frozen is gonna be doing a lot of damage. So use that to your advantage. Yeah. One shining black boss bow goblins like that? Very nice. Oh, one of them had a royal guard shield. That's neat. But now our next location updated, so let's go on and make our way outside of this gatehouse. And it looks like we need to make our way to the third floor basement inside of the library. Uh, I'm just going to fast travel to the shrine. And also, I know for a fact that this is going to be the last Hoenix I need in the entire game for my Medal of Honor. Pretty excited about that. As soon as we spawn in from here, there's going to be a staircase right underneath us. Let's head on down. I'm just going to say this out loud, and I'm pretty sure everyone agrees. Having all the sages out all the time is just annoying more than anything else, except for combat scenarios like this, in which case they become pretty handy. Monster Force has appeared. We have three choo choos to deal with, all the ele elemental ones, which we could use that to take advantage, and then disable the Hoenix, use some Savage Lionel bows, lose them at the face, headshots. And nice, that was the last Teenix I needed in the entire game for the Medal of Honor. Thank you for a whole bunch of seared food and some royal weapons that I definitely don't want. By the way, pro tip, just in case you didn't see my video, behind this door is gonna be a nice piece of clothing for you in case you didn't get that. But also, there's gonna be a respawnable royal shield and that's always nice. And then also from the King study, if you just go ahead and ascend back on up, you're gonna be put to our next objective or just make your way up the staircase like normal, whatever you wanna do. Oh, and now we have some Gibdo to deal with. Keep in mind, you always want to stun Gibdo with an elemental weapon that makes him super weak, and then you can take him down nice and easy. Riju? Thank you. Riju, you're so good at that one very specific thing. 
This is also going to update our location once again, and it looks like it's going to be in Zelda's room. For the record, that's here on the map. And if you come to this large pillar over here, there's going to be a bridge that comes across. Head on down the staircase. Here we're going to be finding Zelda in her room. Trick, it's a monster forces. And these are fire breathing? Sure are. Keep in mind, these fire enemies are not a big fan of ice. And that's them taken care of all nice and quick. We're now tasked with making our way underneath Zelda's room, which requires us to actually fly away from the castle and then back at this exact location right here. You're going to be seeing this entranceway right here, right below this staircase. Here is Zelda once again. Pretty sure it's still not the real one. We have some ice keys to deal with. There's also a silver moblin here who seems to be real preoccupied with my sages. And that didn't take too long. We're going to now see her location updated to a different part of the basement that's going to be not accessible from where we are. However, if we just make our way over here, where this long sturdy stick is going to be, we could use Ascend. Which is going to go ahead, bring us right outside, past this like lake, and you're going to be seeing a staircase over here on the right as we approach. We find ourselves to a nice thin corridor, and here we have a whole bunch of like likes to deal with. From here, I'm going to go ahead and pull out my cannon shield, which is going to reveal all their weak spots. Sidon already got me wet, so I have my Zoro Warrior active. From here, a nice simple repeat. Use the cannon, hit the weak spot, defeat the like like. Oh, thanks, Tullin. I knew you were the best. Link, I am waiting. Waiting. Waiting for you. That's all you've been doing is waiting. I'm gonna take a moment, grab all my mob drops. Now that Zelda is waiting, waiting for us, we need to make our way to the very top of Hyrule Castle into the throne room. Just using Ascend to get on up, it's gonna be a quick climb up and then we can take the bridge over to the throne room. I'm also gonna take a quick detour to the emergency shelter. Let him know that I got the last Hoenix in the world from my Hoenix monster medal. Also, Real quick for something that's going to be explained later, if you haven't done this quest right now and you've just been skipping the Blood Moon cutscene, I would definitely recommend adventuring around a little bit. Go watch the Blood Moon cutscene right now because it's going to change after you're done with this quest. I'll talk more about that later. And I placed down a travel medallion and I'm going to head back there. You are going to be dealing with, mm, let's just say, uh, the, the same problem that you had inside of the Great Deku Tree, except a lot more of that exact same problem. Having all of your sages active is going to be helpful for this, but some multi shop bows, some bomb arrows, things like that are going to be very handy because uh, my go to weapon for this battle is going to actually be a light scale trident with a Molduga fin and then using Sidon to stay wet. Zelda's here. At now last. she's not. I have been waiting for you to arrive. You have? Now, Link. There is something here I want to show you. Oh, yeah? Oh! It's a restored throne room. It looks so nice. The floor isn't destroyed from Calamity Ganon. What do you think? Hyrule Castle, perfect and glorious. Does it awaken memories? Oh, she's teleporting. Hey, memories this was in the trailer. Of our time here? Well, really take in every detail. After all, this place... ...will be the last thing you ever see. What? Oh my god! The Zelda that was totally evil this whole time was a puppet! The fabled swordsman who endured my corruption, who has persisted in slaughtering my servants. This is a mechanic that has been reoccurring in the Zelda franchise as far as puppet Zelda, but it's typically just like one battle or something else like that. It's not like a whole entire storyline based around it, which. Ah, oh, top notch. Such an indirect approach is no longer needed. End this hero's life, my dark servant. Cut him down. 
the Demon King's Phantom Saboteur, Phantom Ganon. I don't know if this Phantom Ganon is stronger than the other Phantom Ganons that you faced in the game, uh, but also there's five of them to deal with, which is gonna be kind of annoying. A lot of Gloom Swords here if you want. Also, this fully upgraded armor isn't really taking a lot of damage right now. Reju, how much damage are you gonna do? Are you gonna are you gonna just wreck all three of these if I shoot down in the middle? Yeah, that was that was not good. Side on, let's get wet. Yeah. And now for the second phase of the battle is gonna be pretty much the same thing as the first, except now we have some gloom floor to deal with. I decided to switch over to radiant armor. Let's get wet. And we are two-shotting the Phantom Ganons. If you have a light scale trident with a Molduga fin, attack three up potion, and then bone proficiency, Phantom Ganons go down in two hits. Oh, and they're dropping Gloom Clubs. Kind of want those. If you're not wet, then they take three hits to go down. Oh, and Gloom Spears. Those are much less common. And after all ten Phantom Ganons are defeated. It seems there is more to you than the power Rauru has gifted. Yeah, bro, greatest swordsman. But not much more. Whoa, it's the sages! Link, we are here! They showed up! Instead of just their spirits. That's pretty neat. Recognize me. Perhaps there are limits to the knowledge the secret stones impart. You stand before Ganondorf. <sighs> he said his name for the first time. Your ancestors served only to delay my ascension. Allow me to show you. Show you. From here, you're gonna be treated to a quick little cutscene that's actually one of the memories. The difference is, everyone got to see this memory. Also, I just noticed Tullin is just hanging out on Yonobo. He's like, I'm done flying for now, I'm just gonna chill here. But await the inevitable end. Demon King we were warned about? It all really happened? He must not be at his full strength. Otherwise, why flee instead of finishing us off? Big brain stuff right there. We should return to Lookout Landing and decide what to do next. Great. Regroup, figure out our points. Link, you should come too. And fantastic. These ten Phantom Ganons were considered a boss, and this is going to be your sixth heart container. Boop. Wait, wait, wait. I just noticed the end of the Gloom Club has the Demon King on it. Okay, that's pretty cool. Now that these events already transpired and now that Zelda's an imposter and, you know, Phantom Ganon was behind the whole thing and you defeated Puppet Zelda, now the Blood Moon cutscene no longer has Zelda talking because Evil Zelda's no longer here. It's a really cool, neat attention to detail that I really, really like. It's somehow creepier without the voiceover. Your, your next blood, I'm telling you now because chances are you just skip the Blood Moon cutscene because it happens all the time now, but your next one, don't, don't skip it and just watch it. From here, if we make our way back to Lookout Landing and all of the sages are chilling here, including Riju and Big Riju, Sidon and old racist Zora, Yonobo and two nosy children, and the random Rito who told him to go on this dangerous adventure and ignore all of his parents' advice, let's go ahead and talk to Pura. There's no mistake in what all you saw of the castle was the Demon King from the legend of their imprisoning war. And the princess you've been seeing was actually an imposter. And the reason she appeared at Hyrule Castle is so the Demon King could lure Link into a trap. Now, your exact text during this conversation is going to depend on several different things. Per is going to be like, hey, you have all these sages here, but wait, I thought there were supposed to be seven of them. What is it? What do you see? There's one more sage back then. Yes, everyone saw the exact same cutscene with Ruda, Naboris, Zelda, 
Rudanya, and Minoru. One more sage that might be here now. You four go back to your homelands and gather information about ruins that might be related to the remaining age. Linky, search around and see if you could find any other undiscovered leads. <laughs> Everyone's relying on you. Don't let us down. And now we have find the fifth sage. Which, if you already got the fifth sage, then uh, you're not going to have this quest. You're just going to have it and it's going to be complete. Otherwise, you're going to have to go out and find the fifth sage. Which is going to be, I guess, the next piece of the walkthrough. It's weird how there's only like five pieces of this walkthrough so far. Yes, I totally did the air quotes like Dr. Evil. Anyways, guys, that's going to be the crisis at Hyrule Castle. Well, you know, the part that you could actually act on for now. And great. Guys, if you found this information helpful, do me a favor. Hit the thumbs up button down below if you're new to the channel. Be sure to subscribe, turn on notifications. Until next time, when I go to Kakariko Village, hint, Austin John out.